And now, ladies and gentlemen, the action continues from here inside of T-Mobile Arena, entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. This is our co-featured bout of the evening, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled in the welterweight division. Your three judges scoring at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Eric Cheek, and Don Trella. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Russell Mora. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gray and white, trimmed in black, he weighed in officially 146 and one half pounds. In 32 professional fights, his record, 24 victories, eight defeats, and seven wins coming by way of knockout. Here's a top 10 super lightweight and former WBA super lightweight champion of the world from Riverside, California, El Maestro Mauricio Herrera. And across the ring stands his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with green and red, representando Mexico. Weighing in officially 147 pounds in 12 professional bouts. He is perfect. 12 victories, no defeats. All 12 wins coming by way of knockout. He is a rising welterweight star, the fighting pride of Grand Prairie, Texas. Here is the undefeated Virgil Ortiz. Mauricio Herrera will have to deal with the energy from that kid. Told us, I think I have to take it away from him, otherwise he will just grow and grow and become a giant. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. God bless you both. Touch up. And Sergio, the question is, Herrera looks inspired. He looks energetic. Does he have enough? skill and energy at his age and having been through the wars to keep this kid off of him. He's proven that he can take a punch. He's never been knocked out. Now if he can escape and go the distance with a man that all of his wins have been by knockout. That just says a lot about Marisa Herrera. Herrera again many thought should have won the junior welterweight championship of the world. That's when Danny Garcia had it and was undisputed. He lost eight rounds to four. One judge had it even. I was there in Puerto Rico that night. I thought Herrera certainly could have won on the cards. I didn't think it was some grand ripoff, but you could make the case that Herrera did enough to win that fight. That would have changed his life completely. I just watched on TV. I thought it was a straight robbery. And I really? thought he deserved the benefit of the decision against Jose Benavidez later that year as well. He talked about it. We were speaking to him this week. And we said, hey, do you, do you still have dreams of being a world champion? He said, I don't think about that. He goes, I, once my dream was smashed in 2014, he goes, but I still want to beat every guy I'm facing. I mean, he said when my dream was smashed. Well, it's, it's what not enough people pay attention to, the human yeah. elements of these bad scorecards. This is not just two wins off his resume, but millions of dollars either in rematches or future fights that he doesn't get because his fights, those two fights, I thought, were scored pretty badly. Already, Sergio, he is able to keep Virgil slightly at bay, right? Change the timing, change the rhythm of Virgil Ortiz, who has so far in his career just come in and marched through people. Well, Virgil Ortiz told us he's a slow starter, and uh, I think he's a poised puncher. He likes to assess and be assertive at times and then finally go for the knockout. But against a veteran like Mauricio Herrera, he knows he's going to go some rounds. Ortiz hurt him there with a hook, brought Herrera up on his feet. Now Herrera tries to show his veteran acumen by holding on. And Ortiz is quick with his hands, yet he is, he is skilled. He is not just some slugger walking in there. He's got a solid amateur background, got 140 amateur wins, and that's turning pro at 18. So imagine if he had just stayed on. He would have been more of a highly decorated amateur. So he turned pro early. Still has tremendous experience. And you can see that even on his face as he walks into the ring. He's calm and he's focused. He's an impressive young man inside and outside the ring. He says all the right things. Came to the fighter meeting. Just awesome, awesome young man. 
and talented. Yeah, look, and he, he plays the piano. He's, he's just not dabbling. He's just, oh, I play a little bit. He spends hours. He says it might be two, three times a week, but it's four hours a shot. And then he goes and trains. He said, look, I'm just a kid. He goes, outside of the ring, I'm kind of stupid. I just play, hang out with my friends. But you can tell, he focuses on what's important. And that has turned him into a highly regarded prospect. And now he gets a co-feature here in Las Vegas against the Maestro. Well, Herrera has been able to slow things down, perhaps not win the round, but certainly give Ortiz something to think about. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's all good. No respect to this bastard. Come on, let's go. Work and you do your job. This dude has one punch. That's it. He just wants to catch you with one punch. That's it. Close up your guard and flex your waist. How you feeling? Good. Good. He wants to do that. So when you clinch, clinch him. Don't let him go. Co-feature time here in Las Vegas. Brian Kenny with Sergio Mora and Chris Mannix here ringside at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Canelo Alvarez and Daniel Jacobs up next. This is Virgil Ortiz Jr. against Mauricio Herrera. What do you think of that first round, Sergio? I love what I've seen. I just, Ortiz is a poised puncher. Look at that. He, every, every punch is hard and crisp, but he's not loading up. He just, he's just a really, really impressive young man. Every, every shot is hard, but he's not trying to put too much power behind it. He punches with technique. Ortiz coming in with a little more purpose here at the start of round two. You know, he said, look, this is my fifth time on the undercard of Canelo, but the fact that he's on a co-feature now, he called it a huge honor. He said, it's crazy. He said for me to be in a co-feature at this point, can't even imagine that. He's looking to make this a big win and a big statement in his career. Herrera, no joke, comes off a loss to Saddam Ali, who lost earlier tonight, but it was competitive. If not on the card, certainly in the rhythm of the ring. You wonder how much he has left. Herrera stop, thought he got hit stop. in the back of the head. Looks to whack Ortiz a little bit. It's going to take everything he has, you get the sense, to keep Ortiz at bay. Now you look at the polish of Ortiz, and you have to remember, too, at that Robert Garcia Boxing Academy, he's been in there with Mikey Garcia, Lucas Matisse, Jose Ramirez. His sparring is elite during most of these training camps. So he's used to difficult opponents. Herrera said, look, I've got to get him to miss. I have to get him to question himself. I, I don't see him questioning himself yet, but he's not Stop. getting run out of the ring. Ortiz told us he had 150 rounds of sparring for this fight because he expected to, for it to go some rounds. He knows that Herrera has never been stopped. So if he can stop him in the early rounds, it'll just be a big statement on Virgil Ortiz's part. Well, he said, Robert Garcia said, hey, if you go 10 with Herrera, that's good for you. They want rounds. They want a, you know, a level of progression as, as good a kid as Virgil Ortiz is, as you face higher and higher level fighters, you're going to have to come up with different dimensions, different answers. And Herrera can force you to another level. Great right-hand counter there by Ortiz that caught Herrera's attention. But yeah, if he can go rounds, that's great. How about a ninth round knockout or a tenth mm. round knockout? That way he can still get the rounds and still keep that unblemished knockout record intact. Herrera trying the jab to the body. You can see Ortiz has a long jab, and it's hard. Comes in. Let him go. Let him go. Stop. No knockdown. No knockdown. I got you. Herrera complained about a you shot behind the head, head but he keeps head dipping head his head down there, and don't, Ortiz don't is down. allowed to throw the right hand over the top there. So if Herrera keeps bending down to his right, I can see Ortiz catching him behind the ear with a bad shot. Ortiz with a beautiful hook. And the like right that. hand, that hurts Herrera. Just like that, Brian. He is that fast, and now Herrera is hurt. He's never been stopped. Struggling, trying to stay on his feet. Down he goes at the bell. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Come here. You want to fight? Yeah. Okay, give me your gloves. Now ring your bell. Herrera barely surviving that, and he'll need the full minute. A wicked attack from Virgil Ortiz. That is the definition of saved by the bell. 
That was an onslaught of punishment there by Virgil Ortiz, just punishing combinations. Why is you waiting for him to catch you with that right? Come on, use your jab. How are you feeling? Okay? Another round? Yeah, good? Okay. It all started with a counter right hand over a lazy jab of Herrera. And from there, Ortiz didn't let the veteran hold on. He stepped back, and then he came with the onslaught of punches, not forgetting the body. Just a vicious attack there on the 38-year-old Mauricio Herrera. 13th pro fight for Virgil Ortiz, and you see how quickly he can turn things in this fight. I mean, he's just classy. Classy with the jab, hard right hands. Everything is hard and nasty. Classy and educated, Brian, because Ortiz, he knows the veteran is going to try to hold on when he's hurt, but he didn't let him. He stepped back and continued the punishment. Excellent point, Sergio. Round three here. How long can it last? Ortiz on the attack. Herrera will need everything. All the experience he has gathered through the years to survive in this fight. Not just win the fight, but at this point survive. A hook catches Herrera, and he's on shaky feet. I that hook just missed, and a right hand landed. Another right hand! No. Herrera's yeah. out! Herrera's out! It's over! And We're gonna watch... We will get a chance to watch. This is the whole third round. It didn't last very long, but it's a chance to see in real time just how sharp Virgil Ortiz is. But look at that faint. Right before he came in, he fainted. He foot fainted because he knows Herrera is not going to bite it the first time. So he faints. He's patiently positioning himself Ooh. for the power. Goes downstairs. Beautiful left hook. And then Sergio, a lead right hand. He changes the rhythm. And look, another yeah. right hand which is just vicious. It's all balanced. It's all at the proper distance. Balance is the perfect word, Brian, because it's balance, it's poised, it's patience, and it's power at its best. Well, we've been blown away by Jojo Diaz, and now we are thoroughly impressed with Virgil Ortiz. Again, there's an A-side, B-side component. We get it. We understand it. And yet, you still have to come in and be sharp and be devastating. Ortiz certainly was. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at the official time, 29 seconds, round number three. Your winner by KO victory from Texas and still undefeated, Virgil Ortiz Jr.